All right, it is fall in Wisconsin, and what does fall mean? Pumpkin time. <laughs> I love pumpkin everything, right? And so I'm gonna make for you today a pumpkin loaf that I'm using home milled flour with. And I developed this recipe because, you know, we always have pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving, but I wanted to make a pumpkin loaf, and I wanted this pumpkin loaf to be really exceptional. I wanted it to be moist, I wanted it to be delicious. I tested this last week, it is phenomenal. I love it, it's probably the best pumpkin loaf I've ever had. So um, we are using fresh milled flour today. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but first of all, let's look at our ingredients and what we need to do. So uh, you can use canned or fresh uh, roasted pumpkin, which I did. I bought one of the little sugar pumpkins that you get at the farmer's market or the grocery store, one of the little ones. I roasted it by stabbing it a few times and then putting it in my oven at 400 degrees. I just, I didn't even cut it. I just put it in whole. I let it roast for about an hour or so, you know, and you just pull that flesh out and mix it up and it's just fine. So what our recipe calls for today is we have one cup of a pumpkin. And again, this could be canned or your own roasted pumpkin. Put it right there in your mixer. I'm telling you, I've had this KitchenAid mixer for, this KitchenAid mixer is probably about 30 years old. And I actually had it rebuilt by KitchenAid because it's so good, so sturdy. I love it so much. But I got my, my one cup of um, pumpkin in there. I have a half a cup of white sugar and I have a half a cup of dark brown sugar. I'll tell you, you could use light brown. I just love dark brown. I've been using it all the time. Anytime a recipe calls for brown sugar, like I, I go with the dark. I'm also putting in a tablespoon of vanilla. I'm putting in one egg. I'm putting in a quarter cup of buttermilk and I'm putting in a quarter cup of olive oil. I love olive oil in all of my cakes. Whenever there's a recipe that calls for oil, you can use vegetable oil, but I just love olive oil. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this for a few minutes on the, uh, uh, on the mixer until it's nice and smooth. All right, we are all done mixing our wet ingredients. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the milled flour here that I've used. Now, I use, with my pastry, I always use a soft white. There are many different kinds of soft white, and right now I have a good supply of soft winter wheat, um, and it's uh, fantastic for pastries, any kind of pastries. I am, I, I ground this on my Como Fitibus Classic Mill. This is a stone grinding mill. I love this mill. Um, and I have, I, I milled it on the finest uh, level. And I do not sift or you know do anything with this. I like it whole, I like it whole wheat. Now, if you don't have a grinder, you could use whole wheat flour. You could use all-purpose flour, although I developed this for the fresh milled flour. So if that's specifically what you're looking for, that's what I used. Um, so what I have in here now, and I weigh it, what I do is I weigh it, okay? And this is 138 grams of whole wheat, soft white uh, flour and you it's about a cup and a quarter maybe now what else i have in here is i have baking soda i have salt and i have um, pumpkin pie spice mix so what i'm going to do now is just on low i'm going to slowly add this in until it's all gone. Now I usually mix a little extra grain just in case the recipe calls, or it, the texture, it feels like it just needs a little bit more flour. You never know when you're dealing with um, a fresh milled flour because many things can affect it, but it could be a little bit more moist than you thought it was gonna be, or, or a little bit too dry. And so it, working with fresh milled flour, it really is about experience and feel. So trust your instincts with this. You know, it's, recipes are recipes. And I know baking is touchy, but you kind of know when it's like, geez, that looks too wet or that doesn't look wet enough. You know, so you, you kind of, you know, you make your own adjustments. Trust yourself. You know, you, you know more than you realize. Okay, I'm going to get the sides pulled down a little bit. Now I can tell you this is nice and moist. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more 
flour in there. Just again, I'm trusting my gut and going with a little bit more. That looks better to me. All right, yeah, that looks much better. All right. So as you can see, it's very moist, which we want because this loaf will come out nice and moist. And what I also like to do with when I'm using fresh milled flour is I like to let it sit for about 30 minutes. I'm going to let this sit for about 30 minutes so that flour can just really absorb all of this liquid and uh, we'll see you in 30 minutes. All right, we've been sitting for a half an hour. I'm looking at the texture of this. It looks really good. Looks like a typical batter, nice and moist. And now I'm gonna add walnuts in. I'm doing coarsely chopped walnut. This is about a cup. Now I love nuts. <laughs> if you don't love nuts, you could do less. You could do more, although this is pretty nutty. I'm just gonna give a quick swirl here. You know, you could even probably, I'm sure, put raisins or, you know, coconut or anything else that you wanted to at this point. I'm sticking with just the nuts. So now I have an eight inch loaf pan that I've lined with parchment and greased with a little olive oil. I'm gonna put it in the pan, scraping all the sides down. So we have baking soda in here to help rise, a little egg, and just gonna smooth that out. Mm -mm -mm. All right, give it a little tap, and this is going in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes or until a cake tester comes out clean. I'll show you how we glaze it when we're all done. See you then. All right, it smells amazing in here. It turned out beautiful, just like I wanted it to. Now I let it cool until it's slightly warm because I like to glaze it when it's, it's a, just a little bit warm. Don't glaze it when it's hot, just a little bit warm is fine. And what I have here, and I wanna show you how I glaze it because I like a thick glaze and a lot of people really make a thin glaze, but I like to go with a thick one. So what I have in here is I have two cups of sifted powder sugar with one teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm just gonna mix that together. And then I am going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Mix that in there. And then I'm gonna add my liquid. Now what you wanna do when you're making a glaze, <laughs> powdered sugar breaks down fast. So you wanna add a little bit at a time I mean, if you do make it too thin, you can always add a little bit more powdered sugar, but I like to kind of go a little bit slow with this. So I'm using milk here. You can use cream um, as well. Um, even maybe you could do apple cider. I'm not sure <laughs> how that would taste, but I usually go with with either milk or cream. If I have cream, I usually do cream, but I didn't have any, so I'm just doing milk. Again, what I'm going for when I am going for this glaze is see how thick this is? This is about as thick as I want it, actually. It's kind of like a toothpaste. Yep, that's about the consistency that I like. What this will do is when you, when it, when you, when you do a thin glaze and you pour it over the top, of your bunt cake or your loaf. It's just real runny and real thin. And the way to avoid that is it goes against your instinct. You think it needs to be really, really runny. And what you wanna do is you actually just wanna make it really, really thick like this. But see, it still, still has some runniness, right? Exactly what I wanted. Now, again, if you don't like a thick glaze, you can definitely make it runnier. It's really a preference. I actually Ow. usually make it even a little thicker. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of walnut for a garnish, chopped walnut. 
and you can serve it just like this in nice slices or you can have some whipped cream or some ice cream mmm that is going to be absolutely delicious I absolutely delicious I hope you enjoy it I hope you make it and happy fall I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're like me and you like healthy cooking, healthy recipes, health tips, fitness, and lifestyle, please subscribe, like, share, and come back.